What's going on guys, my name is Matt and this video marks a pretty important milestone for the channel. See, when I first started to really get into PC hardware, say five years ago, watching channels like Linus Tech Tips, Tech Syndicate, Austin Evans, something that I noticed was a lot of these channels had test benches and that just blew my mind that they had these dedicated high-end systems just for testing. And I feel very fortunate in the fact that today I am building my own PC test bench. Now, this test bench build isn't going to be as high-end or flashy as a lot of the test bench builds you see on YouTube, but it's going to work more than okay for me. And with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into the parts that are going to make up this test bench build. So let's start out with the CPU. This is the AMD Ryzen 7 1700X. It has 8 cores, 16 threads, 3.4 GHz base clock, and 3.8 GHz boost clock. Now you may be asking why I didn't go with 2nd generation Ryzen, and that's because I actually got this 1700X for under $130 on Black Friday, which is a great deal in my opinion. Now if I was playing retail for a CPU, I probably would have went with the R5 2600, just because I think that provides the most value for the money. Moving on to the motherboard, this is the Gigabyte Aris B450 Pro Wi-Fi. Now this is a really full featured board with two M.2 slots, built-in Wi-Fi, pretty good I.O. layout, and built-in RGB. The only problem with this is the VRM setup on this really isn't very good, and I'm not going to be able to get a very high overclock out of this, and because of that, I do think I will be upgrading this motherboard in the near future, either to a better B450 board or to an X470 board. So if you have a board that you recommend, go ahead and leave it in the comment section down below. But I definitely need to upgrade this board in the near future. So moving on to the CPU cooler, this is another temporary item. I'm using one of the old style AMD Wraith coolers. I think this might have come with like the 8350K or something. This is going to be more than adequate with keeping up with the 1700X at stock speeds and should give enough cooling headroom for a 3.7 or 3.8 gigahertz overclock across all cores. With that being said, I do want to upgrade to a different air cooler. I'm thinking about the Cryorig H5 or I may go for a cooler from the company Sith as they seem to have really good price to performance coolers. All right, so moving on to the memory for this system. I'm going to be using a 16 gigabyte kit of Trident Z DDR4 at 3200 MHz. This has a cast latency of 16, so this isn't the best RAM in the world. This also isn't the worst RAM in the world. I would consider this mid to mid upper tier RAM, and I validated it with the 1700X and this motherboard, so it should work perfectly fine, and I was able to get it up to 3000 MHz stable not up to the rated 3200 megahertz, but it should work perfectly fine. Like I said before, this is 16 gigabytes, which is going to be plenty for my testing, as most of what I'm gonna be testing is gaming. So again, G-Skill Trident Z DDR4 should work great for this system. For storage, I went with a single 512 gigabyte SSD. This is an Intel 545S. Now, this is a really good SATA SSD, and it has plenty of room for all my benchmarking software, along with all of the games I test. If I do need more storage, I can always add it in the future in the form of a mechanical hard drive or more SSD storage. I definitely wanted to make sure that everything to start was on an SSD, just because when benchmarking, you're doing such repetitive tasks that while you may only be saving 10 or 15 seconds with loading time here and there on a normal system, when you're doing that task repetitively over and over again, it can save you a considerable amount of time. So moving on to the power supply, this is the EVGA 850B2. This is the most overkill power supply I own. It's 850 watts with an 80 plus bronze certification. Now 850 watts is more than enough for anything that I would need. Realistically, this could handle this entire system plus two of the most high-end GPUs and it'll run perfectly fine. Also, one of the reasons I went with this is because it is made by EVGA, and EVGA is probably my favorite power supply maker. I think they make great units all the way down from like 25 bucks up to well over 100 bucks. I think they have something for everyone and I've had nothing but good luck with them. So for the final part of this build, this is the case or PC enclosure but in reality, it's not really an enclosure because it is an open air test bench. This is the Lee & Lee Pit Stop T60. And while the box does look like it is branded from the mid 2000s, 
This is probably the best price to performance test bench that I have found. It's around $70 shipped. And while I would have went with something like the Praxis wet bench, this is about a third of the cost and I think it looks really nice. It's made out of all aluminum so it's really light and it even has a handle to carry it around so that if I'm testing in different locations, I can easily bring it from place to place. Now one of the only real downsides is that as you can see, this definitely doesn't look like it could hold a full case in it and that's because this is flat packed and there are a bunch of small parts in here that you have to put together. Now some of you may see that as a downside but for a nerd like myself, I actually like that kind of stuff where you have to sit down and assemble it so it's perfectly fine with me. Also, I think this test bench looks really nice and while that shouldn't be a big factor while picking a test bench, the fact this is going to be on video means it doesn't hurt. So now that you've seen all the parts, let's go ahead and cue the epic time lapse. Go. So as you guys can see, this test bench turned out pretty good. I just threw in this old R9 Fury as an example. This test bench is going to be great for testing GPUs, RAM, CPU coolers, SSDs, and other AM4 CPUs. Again, this is definitely a work in progress and will evolve in the coming weeks and months. One thing I messed up on is not installing the 2.5-inch drive mount, meaning I had to improvise on the installation of the SSD. This test bench can hold a pretty good amount of hardware, including three three and a half inch drives, and something I'll never take advantage of, which is the dual five and a quarter inch bays. I really like the look and feel of this case. The all aluminum design makes it light, but it's still surprisingly sturdy, and with the handle properly installed, I feel pretty confident in even shaking this thing around. Overall, I'm super happy now that I have a dedicated test system, which is gonna help immensely with my workflow, and it'll hopefully help with more consistent uploads. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up as well as consider subscribing for more PC and tech related content in the future. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.